Hello, everyone. My name is Marcy Samuelson, and I'm Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Thank you for attending today's workshop, How Autonomous Database Accelerates Developer Productivity. We are very excited to be able to share with you the ways in which the autonomous database can automate developer activities and streamline development of critical business applications. If you have questions during the webcast, please put your question in the Q&A area and we will answer them as soon as we can. We will also have a live Q&A session after Robert's presentation. This webcast is being recorded and we will make it available shortly after the webcast concludes. We will also make the slide deck available so you can review what was discussed. Again, thank you for joining the webcast, How Autonomous Database Accelerates Developer Productivity. I am joined today by Robert Green, Senior Director of Product Manager at Oracle. At this point, I will turn it over to Robert. Okay, then let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, so thanks everyone for spending your time with me. I know uh, everyone's time is valuable and we're here today to talk about Autonomous Database for developers. And this is really kind of a kickoff. Uh, the intention is for us to uh, have a regular series, so one session a month, where we'll spend an hour doing a deep dive into some particular technical topic related to autonomous database. And so this session is kicking off that series and is giving a quick overview to give you an idea of the feature functionality that is available in autonomous and therefore uh, giving you an idea about what's coming up in all these future sessions. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started and uh, dive into it. So uh, what we like to say, finally, uh, Oracle is becoming accessible to developers. And the reason this is important is that, you know, historically, Oracle is perceived as an extremely powerful database but yet very difficult to get started with. And you, you tend to rely on IT or DBAs to, you know, to, to get it all set up. Um, it's considered best in class, but at the same time, it's considered very costly. So generally it's been sort of inaccessible just because of the costs involved oftentimes. Um, that licensing, uh, the perpetual licensing, hindering you, know, you getting access for learning with Oracle, even though it's, it's the best in class. Um, very, very high performance. It's you know known to be very high performance, but yet it's complex. You typically need uh, with deep DBA skills in order to sort of eke that that uh, extreme performance out of it. And then finally, uh, it's it's also perceived as relational only, which is which is by far and away not uh, not really true uh, anymore these days, right? As things have evolved, new data types have arrived, different workloads, um, all those things are really uh, becoming and have become a part of the Oracle database. So. The exciting thing is that uh, autonomous database um, will kind of change these perceptions, and and, uh, and that's what we're here to talk about. And we think you know now developers really finally can get the most powerful, the best in class, the highest performance, uh, and the in ironically what becomes the easiest to use, the most affordable um, kind of modern database that's out there. And so I like to do a level set because there's a lot of marketing hype that's out there about this. But at the end of the day, the whole world is transforming into an artificial intelligence revolution where they're applying AI to what it is that they do as a company. You know, Oracle is a database company, a cloud company. And so we're applying AI to what we're doing in these areas. And there's really no reason why in a day, in a modern day like today, where cars are driving themselves, parking themselves, where airplanes are actually landing safer in autopilot. And, you know, when you can go to travel to some foreign country where you don't even speak the language and yet your smartphone lets you have a conversation with the taxi driver. Right. So when we get to that stage, there's really no reason why databases shouldn't become self-tuning, self-repairing and self-protecting. And so that's what really autonomous database is all about. And just a couple slides for those who might not be familiar with autonomous. So it's, there's about three slides just to give you a, a quick glimpse. It's like, what is this thing? And it really is a new era in database where everything gets automated. Uh, it, you know, when we say, you know, provisioning of, of the infrastructure and the database, we're, you know, we're not talking about just a you know, single instance database. We're talking about an architecture, right? Deploying highly available, maximum availability kind of architectures and giving the automation to be able to scale that up, scale it down and performance tune it 
and keep it up to date from a security perspective and a patching perspective and all that um, online and automatically, right? So it just takes care of itself. And uh, that's driven through a, a kind of machine learning overlay that's there in place to provide uh, a, a, an additional level of reliability and high performance. And so it really gives you kind of a mission critical capability, but it's really simple to use and very, very low cost and low risk. And so the, the, there's kind of two main objectives with the delivery of autonomous. And one is to give you an effortless operational excellence because managing databases is historically very complex, hard to do. And so autonomous is like trying to give you, you know, that database that's running all of these most mission critical systems in the world for all the, you know, fortune 500 companies, but yet it's available to you kind of a, with a click of a button or, you know, with a call of an API and it would deliver operational excellence. So it's, it's, it's giving you complete uh, uh, reliability through the infrastructure, through all the database operations and lifecycle, and even optimizing um, it, the workload for you, okay? Using this machine learning. And the other thing is an effortless extreme performance. So it is running, this service is running on what traditionally was a very hard to get best in class Oracle Exadata platform. And autonomous is, is allowing you to get that basically uh, one little bite at a time, but you're getting all that extreme performance. So you're, you're, you're actually no longer running on like just a single instance database, but Exadata is a distributed database architecture. Uh, even though it, it's been around for you know, 10, 10 or more years, it actually is doing the, kind of the same things that people are doing with Hadoop or with Spark where they're pushing the processing down to where the data is instead of having to move all the data. And so Exadata has been designed that way, if, you know, for, you know, for a very long time now, uh, just for relational data. So, um, you know, you literally can, can, can push the SQL down into storage tiers and you can scale to like petabyte level databases. So, you know, you can have real simple to use databases and, and through the same constructs and through the architecture, you can get massive, very complex mission critical databases. And that's the idea is just to make all that super simple for you um, by using the world's most proven database technologies. So I wanna do a quick walkthrough. I assume, you know, probably some of you on the um, webcast have not actually seen Oracle Cloud, Oracle Autonomous Database Service so I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough to give you an idea of what the UX looks like. I mean, you know, the first couple of times you start using it, you probably would play around with the UX and then you'd, you'd move quickly to the APIs and you, you probably would just build a lot of stuff around the APIs, but let's give you an idea of the service. So here we have Oracle's cloud. And if you Google for Oracle cloud, console, you know, you'll, you'll get a link to this. So and I'm going into a particular account that I know of. I'm going to log in as me. Let's see. Do I get it right? save that so yeah so okay so this is oracle cloud um pretty you know pretty straightforward the main menu over here you can get you know to all of the infrastructure services right the same kind of things you find in the other major cloud providers right all the compute um you know from basic shapes to you know uh, gpus and all of that uh you know vm based bare metal etc um all the storage you know object storage services File, file transfer stuff, networking, all the virtual cloud networking. And then, and then there's a database section. And this is where you see all of the autonomous database stuff and some of the other just VM and Exadata class uh, database services that we offer. And then there's a bunch of other stuff that you get in the cloud, you know, dealing with big data, data lakes, you know, dealing with uh, analytics and, and integrating with applications and logging and monitoring and, you know, diagnostics, the, the same stuff that you would expect you need to build a full solution in the cloud, okay? But if you go to the autonomous database section and I'm picking the transaction processing workload, you could have used JSON or you could have used the data warehouse or uh, there's graph stuff coming in and others. Uh, so you, you see the, the core console 
And we offer uh, the ability to get autonomous in like a, a multi-tenanted environment, you know, sh a shared kind of environment, or you can actually get dedicated stuff. So when you, when you use the dedicated stuff, you would, you would create containers basically that, that satisfy certain SLAs um, on your dedicated infrastructure. And, and then it's the same interface as shared. Uh, it's just uh, shared is abstracted away a little bit. Um, so, you know, you, you scope yourself to where you're working in a particular compartment, right? If different lines of business would have different compartments. And so you can quota control and things like that and, and, and have identity and access management relative to your line of business in your compartment. And then you can create uh, autonomous databases. And so it's pretty straightforward. If, if I were to uh, say I want a, you know, a dev database, you know, I can give it a display name and an actual uh, database name. You see the different uh, um, transaction uh, processing, data warehouse, JSON, workload types, and also some uh, a very you know, low code development environments. You can choose that multi-tenanted or the dedicated type of environment. If you're going to choose dedicated, uh, you know, you, you could enable the you know, high availability data guard choices, or um, you just choose a container that you've already set up here. My containers are managed by a fleet uh, administrator. And so, you know, I'm going to go and pick one of these containers. And, you know, then you can choose the number of CPUs that you want. You can change the storage, you know, to whatever size you want, um, enable, disable, auto scaling. And that's it. You know, you put in a, an admin password. And, and say create. And there you go, you, you, you'll create a database. Um, the main point though, is that uh, uh, it's really easy to get started with these things. So even though it's very powerful, provides all that high availability and all those kinds of choices, it's really simple. You just issue an API call and you get a database in a couple minutes. Um, in the meantime, I'll go into one while this is provisioning. And you can see that it gives you the, you know, the basic information as to what you had selected in the creation process and whether or not it's you know deploying autonomous data guard, well, you can go in to the database, and from here you kind of get details about what's going on with your databases, and so you can see uh, uh, how you would get connected. So there's um, basically at the latest sort of TLS wallet-based connectivity that you could just download a wallet and connect, uh, or you can use the classic kind of connection strings um, that you would use to connect to Oracle. Uh, there are tools to help you. Uh, understand the performance characteristics as you're writing applications. There are native tools which allow you to look at uh, how your SQL is performing um, over time and, and analyze and you know drill into each individual SQL statement um, to, to help you tune your application or help you write your SQL, basically. Um, and then you, you, you can manually scale up and down or you can set the auto scaling option if you didn't do it when you created the database. And you can do a bunch of other stuff like, you know, creating clones, dealing with your encryption keys, you know, all those kinds of things. Now, beyond the basic information, we do have like operational insight dashboards that let you uh, look at what's going on with the uh, state of your resources. Um, there are other tooling sections where natively we've built into the service uh, uh, development tools uh, and things like low-code development, drag and drop environments that I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about. And, uh, and also, you know, for each service, you can look at all the metrics in terms of what's going on with your databases, in terms of your CPU utilization or your storage usage, you know, how many sessions are connected and, you know, those kinds of things. And you can then go in and set alarms and thresholds and, um, and basically get alerts, you know, when uh, anything is, is uh, uh, you know, breaching your rules, basically, that you put into those uh, alarms. Uh, and then of course, you know, it's a database, so you've got a backup area where you can look at what's going on with all the backups. It's all automatically taken care of, although you can create manual backups on your own and recover from those. And then you have, you know, things like data guard, which can be set up, um, which would allow you to have like multiple uh, replica cop copies across availability domains or across regions for high availability. And anything that you execute results in a work request. So you can kind of monitor the progress of each, um, what is it effectively an API call. 
So that's just a real quick glimpse at um, what the basic user experience looks like. But again, you know, you'll probably use this a couple of times, um, but you'll see that this is also available in IDEs. And so oftentimes you would just do these things perhaps directly in your IDE, uh, or um, you would just be using the APIs. Gives you a, a quick, quick glimpse. So now I'm gonna go back to the presentation. Okay, and, uh, and, and continue. So now I wanna talk about those features that we're gonna spend a considerable amount of time on in future sessions. So this is just giving you an idea. So this is not the, not the deep dive, right? We can, literally, we can literally spend an hour on auto indexing, for, ex for example. So it's one of the things that we um, have an autonomous database is uh, to performance to normally, you know, indexing, index analysis and index creation is a very regular part of the job that, you know, oftentimes it would be like a DBA or something would do. But in autonomous, developers don't necessarily need that kind of DBA level expertise in these areas um, where uh, you can just, you know, uh, use the auto indexing features of the autonomous database and you set up your basic schema and the relationships between your entities. And then the indexing will happen over time. So as your database is used, as the data grows, as the system gets larger over time, it will constantly be looking at it and tuning it. Um, so it takes a great deal of stress and performance tuning off of uh, the developer, right? And reduces the, you know, sort of administrator level things that you have to do. And it just simplifies performance tuning. Uh, and the, importantly, over time, not just like um, for a moment, but literally over time as the system changes, okay? Another session that we'll have is on auto scaling. So um, Oracle and its autonomous database uh, allows you to automatically scale um, uh, both vertically, right? So up, up to the physical boundaries of uh, servers, but also we allow you to scale out across physical servers, not just for read operations, like you know, creating a read farm, but for read and write, because we've got underlying clustering technology. And so auto scaling uh, literally looks at the SQL, at the requests that are coming through to the database, and it makes decisions about parallelization of the queries, about uh, scaling up the number of CPUs that are being used, about um, scaling it back down as the SQL flowing through is, is less intensive. And it literally gives you an integral of the usage. So it's true pay per use. It's not like a schedule based where, you know, where you know, every Friday it scales up you know, twice as much and then on Sunday it scales back down. It literally can look at the incoming SQL and give you a pay per use flow over that workload. Okay, so very, very sophisticated, very, very advanced. So the other thing that's natively a part of the autonomous database service is high availability. So when you're writing, you know, an application that you ultimately is going to be like a mission critical app, it, it can be uh, very difficult. Sometimes you, you have, depending on the kind of database that you're using, you actually have to customize the way you build your app for that availability architecture. Well, with autonomous, it's all just built in all the, the, the clustering capabilities um, for localized failures of any kind. And then also the redundant rep replica for site level kind of outages where you have you know, wide scale um, system failure. Uh, that is just kind of built into the service. And you just, you know, you choose your SLA if you will, and that's it, right? Then you write your code like normal and uh, but behind the scenes under the covers, Autonomous is using our real application clusters to give a completely online experience. So the, even during maintenance operations and things like that, you know, it, your app never goes down. So this isn't just like for failure conditions, even during planned activities that normally would take other services down, it just keeps working. And you don't have to do anything. That's the thing that's cool about it. It makes it very accessible to developers. You just have to write code like you're writing to, you know, some, some simple little database. And yet all the underlying core services of autonomous are gonna give you all this con constantly online high availability. Um, and we use things like transparent application continuity to deliver that, right? Which is intelligence put into the client drivers uh, it, that work with the underlying clustering technology in order to keep you always online. 
Uh, and we're going to we're going to have a session where we deep dive into all of this and spend an, you know, an hour talking about how this stuff works, how it's set up, you know, basically, which is very simple, actually, especially if you use the latest drivers and um, and how it will work with your maintenance activities and how it works in failure conditions. That's pretty amazing stuff. So we'll have to we'll, we'll deep dive into that in another session. Um, but the idea behind that transparent application continuity is that um, we provide services that you connect through. And we've designed these services in such a way that they can, they've sort of auto build in prioritization. So if you're building sophisticated apps, you can literally kind of set the prioritization of different kinds of client connectivity. And that also then ties into how much concurrency that you can get from these different kinds of services uh, and, and what kind of parallelization you can get um, when you issue queries, you know, for example, in data warehousing workloads where, you know, you really want to spin those queries up against, uh, you know, a highly partitioned system and have everything operate in parallel to give you very low latency response. So you can, you can get all the sophistication of all of that without actually having to program for it. You just choose a service that delivers that capability and you connect to, through that service and then all the rest of it is automatically taken care of. Okay, so very powerful stuff. And we'll spend, we'll spend a session talking about this. So the other thing that's in Autonomous Database is it's ready for low code development. So there is an, a native drag and drop kind of capability that's in the service where you can literally just bring up uh, an app and start dragging and dropping visual components onto it and just build an app right over your data. Okay, and you can literally create an app in minutes. Okay, it's that it's that powerful, and this is getting more and more popular these days. Is is having these kind of drag and drop, um, uh, a visual application building paradigms, and so this we have one natively inside the service. But what's also I think very important about it is it's low code, so you can just drag and drop and create the app, but you can also dive down a little bit and start to customize and create very very rich and powerful. Uh, applications by adding just a little bit of code. Okay, so it gives you the flexibility to do pure drag and drop or to really get in there and sort of customize that initial set of drag and drop features. Uh, so we have customers who've created extremely powerful applications on this uh, Apex development paradigm. So it's natively a part of the service. And we'll have a session focusing on this as well to show you how to do it. The other thing that's also very important is today, you know, people building modern apps, there's a lot of people who are trying to um, use machine learning to, uh, you know, just like we're doing for the autonomous database to kind of enhance their application to be more intelligent for whatever it is they're doing, if it's healthcare or if it's telecom or, you know, whatever it is, right, that you're adding machine learning into your solutions. And oftentimes also you're dealing with data that isn't necessarily relational. And so it's, you're storing that data somewhere else typically more and more these days in an object store, um, but maybe, you know, even in, in Hadoop like clusters and, you know, Spark, you know, areas where you're doing Spark uh, processing. And so Autonomous Database has a set of uh, uh, facilities in it where you can just set up um, through these uh, very, very simple uh, pre-built packages connectivity into any object store and into you know, things like Hadoop clusters. And so when you issue your SQL statements, it actually will, will push the processing out into uh, 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 not just the database itself, but also these other stores. Now, obviously, um, you know, we can control the push of that stuff into Oracle object stores and Oracle Cloud. So we, you know, we can deploy code, which is working next to the object stores and push the SQL. We can't do that in, in, in other cloud providers, um, but so we still, we have to pull that data to us for processing. So it's not as efficient, but you can literally connect anywhere. You can connect to, you know, Amazon S3, you can connect to Azure Blob store. You can connect to anyone's S3 compliant uh, object store. And so it creates a nice uh, ability to have like, you know, a real data platform and uh, not just the, the, the relational side of it, but, literally any kind of data. And the other thing we, you know, I talked about this, you, you know, you'll use the UX and all that uh, for the first 
couple of times that you're building databases and you're playing around with it, but eventually you're going to go to the REST APIs, you're going to go to the CLIs, and ultimately, you know, you need to have a software to find everything, and, and that's what you can get here. So you can have a full sort of continuous integration and delivery capability because you can repeatably deploy these stacks, right? The stack of the infrastructure and of the autonomous databases uh, on the fly, and you can do it very repeatably. And there's there are other advanced things that are built into the service um, where you can also set up development environments um, with, with uh, uh, cloned database copies, for example. And those development environments can be uh, uh, refreshed. So you, there are facilities to kind of from the master database to refresh the clones um, to keep them up to date for development. So there's some very sophisticated stuff in there that helps you with the continuous integration and delivery pipeline. And ultimately, um, that leads to you know, your ability to build uh, microservices, I mean, the core sort of functionality. But um, I think what is, what is even more interesting is that today, uh, Oracle and the autonomous database, it is a converged database so that you can handle really any kind of data type and any kind of workload uh, that you find in modern solutions today. So whether you're dealing with JSON data, whether you're dealing with IoT, you know, key value type of stuff or graph, you know, all of that stuff is, is available in a converged autonomous database service. And what's important about that is that while each individual microservices team can have their own database and be working independently on their own timelines and own schedules. So you have all these pizza teams working on their specific area of functionality. The core services are then common. So the security model, the you know all the backup um, uh, processing, all the high availability, you know all those kind of services are common, and so you don't have this fractured experience. You don't have like a, you've got a unique high availability configuration for each you know uh, database that you're using because you're using different databases for different data types, um, and and you know then how do you manage the security model where each you know, each database type is, you know, got a different way of dealing with security and, you know, each each has a different way of backing up. And, you know, so this really, you know, simplifies it because you don't also have to pipeline the data around between these different databases. They can just do the job that they need to do for the purpose of that um, piece of the solution through that microservice. And then you also have the ability to come in and look at all the data holistically. So you can write like global queries that would leverage all of the data across these different um, uh, individual microservices. And you can even put like uh, 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 queues in place to, to, to move some of the data sort of in the back end in these common service layers when you want to have uh, copies of the data in each individual microservice. So it gives you a really holistic platform, lets your independent pizza teams work, do what they need to do, but doesn't really like silo that data, it gives you a way to be able to globally look at all the data. Uh, so very, very efficient for delivering modern apps. And then obviously the, the next thing is once you built apps, you know, you really do need to pay attention to the operational side and, you know, you, you want to have good visibility into the health of the system. And of course, you don't want to be staring at a screen all the time, you know, to know that your databases are up and those kinds of things. So, um, uh, you know, there's a whole operational notification framework that allows you to uh, asynchronously um, keep watch, basically. So you can set up different sort of segmented responsibilities, you know, people who are in your compliance and want to know that you've got the latest security patches or, you know, people who are worried about uh, making sure that you've got, uh, you know, archived, you know, data storage and of your, you know, your backups for um, auditors, you know, different areas of responsibility, you can set up different uh, uh, um, uh, subscriptions, basically, to, to these different topics. And then each of these different groups can get the notifications that are relevant to them. But the bottom line is that you get you get sort of an active operational um, awareness as to what's going on with your app and your, your autonomous database services. You know, it's the Oracle database and the transparent application continuity that I talked about very briefly is all built on the uh, Oracle OCI, the Oracle call interface layers. So there's a ton of drivers out there for, you know, languages like Go and Node.js and Python and others, 
where the, these drivers, because they're all layered on top of this one interface, they all get the advantages that I was just talking about in terms of uh, transparent application continuity and you, be, you being able to easily build these apps that never have any downtime, right? And that's part of the, how, how is this autonomous database make it really easy for uh, developers to build you know, apps that are just easily highly available and things like that. It's through the full stack um, that is working its way all the way up into the client drivers for the language that you, you care about for the particular app that you're building. And importantly, all those uh, uh, SDKs where you can uh, you can use uh, you know, software to find everything approach, right? So you can just build the generation of your infrastructure and your database stacks using your favorite languages um, and using you know uh, traditional things like a Docker um, and Kubernetes, you know Kubernetes. But that also uh, we have inside the Oracle Cloud a bunch of predefined images that have the, the co common developer stacks that are kind of there. And so you can go to the marketplace and you can get these images and, uh, and just spin one of these up in a compute VM. And then it's got the full kind of setup for you. And then you just, you know, you grab your wallet from a, a, a database instance and, and drag it to your, your application and configure the driver to point to the, you know, the credentials and boom, that's it. You're kind of connected. you got a full stack. So make it really, really easy for you to, um, uh, and to orchestrate full stacks and to use your favorite languages uh, to, to, to do a software defined in kind of everything, um, which gives you the ability to do continuous integration and delivery. And I mentioned this at the start of the session, uh, we have IDE integrations with the most popular IDEs that are out there, uh, you know, VS Code, Visual Studio, Eclipse. And so those things that I kind of walked you through on the Oracle Cloud Console you actually, you know, you again, you probably might do that when you're first checking things out, but ultimately you can go get a, a, a plug-in and drop it into your IDE. And then everything that that you saw there, you can do natively right inside your IDE. So you can create databases on the fly and you can, uh, you know, you can clone them and, you know, have you with those refreshable clone kind of capabilities and all that stuff. So you can, you really can just develop inside your IDE and you don't have to leave that environment which makes it really easy. And what's really also very cool is we have this free tier, right? So it's an, and it's an always free tier. It's not one of those kind of like, well, it's free for a year. And then after a year, you have to start paying. This is like free perpetually. And, you know, you, it's, it's, you get a couple databases. Yeah. They're, it's, it's sm smaller, right? They're constrained 20 gigabyte um, databases, but you can also have compute. You can also have storage and you know, some of the networking and load balancing services. So you really can build real applications with this free tier and it's always there. It's not like it's gonna go away or you're suddenly gonna have to start paying for it. So you have a, a, a way that you can really sandbox and play around and understand the capabilities of autonomous database and, and, and even deploy some kind of like, uh, you know, applications which, uh, which don't, need, don't need large databases, right? You can, you can make a couple of those. And the bottom line is that this really does ease the complexity for developers. And that, that's you know, what this is, is meant is, is, first of all, the accessibility. Um, the fact that now you can get something which was hard to, hard to get your hands on, right? It's like you know, the best in class exadata. It's like you know, the, the fastest database in the world, the most scalable database in the world. You, you, you would have to pay millions of dollars to get that before. And now you can get it. You, you can get it for free as part of the free tier, but you, you can get it for you know, one core at a time. Um, so the accessibility is there. And yet the, the ease of, of uh, developing is, is brought to you, the developer, because all the clustering and all of the native you know, replication uh, technologies that are supporting all these you know, super mission critical apps are just there. It's just inside the service itself. And so you can really get a fast time to market. You can build your databases like that. You really don't need to rely on deep DBA skills anymore. I mean, you need some, you know, some knowledge of what is a database, but you don't necessarily need to have really, really deep DBA expertise um, to manage an Exadata stack or something like that. It's just all done, part of the service. It's managed by Oracle. 
um, and it's converged. So, you know, if you're building a microservice type solution where you're dealing with different data types and all that, you know, you, you have the independence to execute and build all that stuff with your different teams, but yet all the services are common. So it just greatly simplifies the overall architecture and solution. And you, you know, you can be sure that, you know, if you've got a, a, a 99.995 kind of availability SLA in place for one of your microservices that, well, guess what? It's in place for all the microservices because it's a common set of services. And at the end of the day, you can even, you know, drag and drop and, you know, build low code kind of applications, which is, you know, increasingly popular these days, or you can go, you know, full on and, you know, use REST data services and, you know, use your favorite, you know, Java or Go or, you know, Node or, you know, what have you and, uh, and, and build a um, multi-tiered application, right? It's, it's just super easy to deal with what was a very, a very, very complex aspect of, of a solution, which is the database tier. And you can get it completely free um, for uh, all, forever, right? It's, it's, a, it's an always free tier. Now, um, again, this is just a kickoff, giving you an idea about what's available in the autonomous database. But to do it justice, the whole idea is that we're going to give deep dive sessions. So every month, there's going to be something where we spend an hour, for example, talking about, um, you know, how do you set up uh, the elastic scaling and auto scaling, and which which actually is the click of a button, right? But but once it's there, it's like, well, how is it behaving, and how do you know what it's doing? How do you monitor it? How do you see, you know, uh, as you as you're developing your code, that you can kind of see how some of the execution of the SQL is causing that scaling to happen and then come back down, right? So, you know, we're going to, we'll spend an hour on that, right? We'll spend an hour on the auto indexing and, you know, all the things that, how do you know what's going on with the indexing? You know, maybe, maybe you want to use auto indexing, you know, through your development cycles, but you want to lock it down in production. Um, you know, you, you know, how, how do you do that, right? How do you, um, you know, how do you deal with all the different aspects of, of what's happening from the, uh, the autonomous operations and setting policies in terms of how it is that you want the the autonomous system to um to, to self-drive right so uh to self-secure there's ways that you can control things uh, so we'll have sessions that dive into each of those and you can kind of see this we're going to start out with the auto indexing deep dive you know then we're going to uh, take a look at auto scaling then we're going to do a deep dive into all the rest apis and exactly how you would configure and set that up and, and what you you know what you can do with those apis We'll look into the operational notifications. Um, we're going to give you a deep dive session on autonomous JSON. Uh, and there's a whole series that's going to follow where we're going to dig way down into the uh, details of how to do all of these advanced um, uh, and very powerful things that uh, allow you to get the most out of using Oracle's autonomous database. And so with that, I want to thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully you found this valuable. And I think what's really going to be exciting is when we dig down and you know, get into the coding level, get into the explanation of these advanced features. I think that's going to be really beneficial to, to everybody. And you can really try this stuff out because we have the free tier. So I'd encourage you, you know, go Google for that and sign up for it. You know, get your access to the uh, free autonomous database tier. And, uh, and, and then, you know, we look forward to seeing you on future sessions where we will uh, dig into the details. All right. So again, thank you very much for spending your time and have a great day.